City University of Hong Kong is an international university which emphasizes the integration of research and teaching. The university promotes diversified, cross-cultural studies through various educational programs. To promote our educational vision, City University of Hong Kong produced a series called Beyond Boundaries, Dialogue with Presidents of World's Leading Educational Institutions. Professor Wei Guo, President of City University of Hong Kong, talks to presidents of universities and principals of high schools around the world, exploring each other's strengths and looking forward to the future direction of educational development. This is a well-known girls' middle school in Hong Kong with a long history, unique traditions, and outstanding students. This is Hong Kong Diocesan Girls' School. Over the past 160 years, the Diocesan Girls' School has cultivated plenty of extraordinary women in Hong Kong, such as Ho Kam Chi, the first female justice of the peace in Hong Kong. Vivian Yam Wing Wa, chair professor at the University of Hong Kong. Eva Cheng Yu Wa, former secretary for transport and housing. Fok Lo Xiu Ching, former secretary for health and welfare. Selena Chow Hoi Shun, entrepreneur, and many more. The predecessor of the school was founded in 1860 being one of the first women's schools established by the Anglican Church in Hong Kong. The Christian background of the school and its original intention of serving the society have continued till now and become the cornerstone of the school to cultivate students' spiritual and moral virtues. Therefore, the school motto is Daily Giving Service. Other than knowledge and morality cultivation, the Diocesan Girls' School also focuses on students' athletic training and musical competency. The college's choir, string orchestra and symphony orchestra have attained numerous awards in Hong Kong and international competitions. In the field of sports, many of the Diocesan Girls' School alumni have also become outstanding athletes participating in international competitions on behalf of Hong Kong. In this episode, we invite Mrs. Stella Lau, headmistress of Diocesan Girls' School, to share her experience and vision. <music> Professor Wei Kuo, president of City University of Hong Kong, is well known for his research on the reliability of electronic systems and nuclear energy. In his early years, he worked at Bell Laboratories in the United States, who held the position of department head and dean of the School of Engineering in an American university, and was conferred academicians in various countries. <laughs> Professor Wei Kuo, has served as the president of City U for more than 10 years. His philosophy of education is summarized in the lyrics of the City U anthem, which he wrote, learn and question beyond boundaries. <laughs> Professor Wei Guo has also published several books about education, 
he is particularly concerned about the challenges facing contemporary education around the world.我们今天很高兴能够请到香港最好的女校也是香港最好的中学之一的校长就是拔萃女校的校长 Stella Law 她是一个资深但是年轻的女校长她在这个拔萃女校已经工作了二十年出头让我们来听听她的感想希望从她的对话中 Well, I am thanking you for having me here so tell us some legacy of this uh, great girls' school. Sure. Um, our school, Dioxys and Girls School, everybody calls us by acronym DGS. Yes. Uh, we were founded in 1860 by the wife of the first bishop from the UK to Hong Kong. And she therefore left us with two legacies. One is that we are an English school, which means that apart from Chinese, uh, as a subject, Chinese history, Chinese literature, the other subjects are all taught in English. Secondly is, you know, we pay a lot of attention to uh, spiritual nurturing mm -hmm. and we stay a Christian school. The, the school is known for training students who are academically excellent. But actually there's something also very impressive. The, the students, uh, your motto also has some daily given Yes, and our motto is Daily Giving Service, DGS, Dioxys yeah. and Girls School, uh -huh. and we also use the three uh, capital letters to uh, indicate one aspect of our education, and that is Daily Giving Service. Yeah, tell us a little bit about this uh, uh, Daily Giving Service. Right. You see, for the DGS education, we make sure that it encompasses five facets. Yes. As a school, of course, we are after academic pursuit, but we believe in wanting all our students to have good health, and therefore it's sports for health. And then we also believe in training up young people who can uh, engage in some more quiet activities like mm -hmm. aesthetic appreciation, and that could cover music, uh, uh, art, um, uh, whatnot. And then we feel that A, if you have been given all these good things from the school, there could be times eventually when you must be thinking about serving others. And therefore, we said that everyone, every student at DGS has to serve. And that is for us spiritual nurturing. And uh, for us, you know, every day we gather together as a school to worship, to learn from the Bible, to sing, to praise to pray to God for uh, support and guidance. And uh, as I said, then that is what we call the comprehensive DGS education, five pillars. So for us, of course, as a school, I know while people say, oh, you shouldn't just look at academic success, but that is also something that we must deliver. But of course, as to what you mean by academic success is subject to different interpretations. Yes. But we make sure that we benchmark at a level that will enable our students to go on to the next stage of learning, say, for example, university, at tertiary institutions. Whenever our students go to them, we want to make sure that they are well equipped to learn from the masters at university. Then, of course, apart from that, we feel that you, know, you, can, you can't ask young people to just study and study and study. And that's why we brought in uh, the other four facets, you know, uh, sports for health, aesthetic appreciation, um, and so sharing uh, what good 
things you have with other people through services and also be able to quiet down, to self-manage oneself, to manage oneself. And that is when we do the spiritual nurturing, that you take an inner look at yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we don't do it often, to look at ourselves like a mirror. How about, uh, do, you, do you do or do you divide them at some stage whether they should get into the, uh, say, natural science or social science track, or you think there's no need to differentiate? We don't do that anymore. Don't do that anymore. In the old days, oh, yes. Okay. I mean, you call the different classes a science class or an arts class. Now we don't do it anymore. I mean, basically, it's both the arts and the sciences, Good. and students are free to mix and match for Good. themselves. So they then make sell themselves someday. Right. I mean, we are very happy to see people, say, who do the three sciences, take up English literature or Chinese literature as a fourth subject. Uh -huh. And it's happening in our school all the time. But do students get into such, such subject, even though later on they choose to be a um, medicine engineer? Some of them do. Some, Some of them do, yes. I mean, you're going to find that, you see, for our students who go to medical school, and in fact, each year for the graduating class, it's about 20 to 25 percent of our students okay. getting into medical school. Many of them into music, into sports, into all sorts of things. Because you see, they see those activities, extra learning opportunities for themselves, apart from pure academic studies. Okay. The Diocesan Girls' School focuses on cultivating students' knowledge, artistic literacy, and athletic capability, and also values students' spiritual nurturing of serving others and contributing to the society, helping students to get prepared for further studies and participation in society. And uh, you'll be very surprised, Preston, to see the level that they have attained in these extracurricular learning. I'm not learning. surprised yeah. by anything that you <laughs> Even sports. You see, even sports for our girls, they swim to the Olympics. Oh. They run to the Asian Games. But of course, it's not everyone. In fact, we try to take in the best of different domains. It could okay. be an athlete who is, upon joining us, okay. substandard in the academic attainment. Yeah. But when they exit, we make sure that they are ready for the next stage of the education. And that's why we command a lot of respect from our students. I think this is really differentiate yourself, GBS, with some other high schools. Mm. A lot of high schools in the greater China area um, they, they choose the students based on academic record only. We or, don't or do that. You don't do we that. We don't so do you that. Differentiate yes. yourself on that. But this is great because, uh, as even Confucius used to say, uh, everyone's talent in some way. We mentioned curriculum. Right. Um, over many years, in um, almost every society, from UK, Japan, USA, mm -hmm. mainland, and of course, Hong Kong and uh, Korea, there are always a curriculum development. Yes. So we are up upgrading or updating the curriculum. Of course, since uh, 97, Hong Kong has uh, been through a few you know, iterations yes. to modify our curriculum. Uh, do you see any challenges here? Well, first of all, I think um uh, curriculum reform is a necessity yes. and a must. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can see curriculum reform from this perspective, you won't feel that frustrated when new things are being introduced because we're now living in a world which is uh, impacted by technology and technology moves fast. And if our curriculum were to stay static for many years, just simply means that we are not preparing our students for the way forward, their future. And therefore, whenever there are uh, curriculum reforms, I know it poses a bit of pressure, a bit of um, uh, 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 discomfort because we have to, you know, uh, perhaps uh, continue to learn all the time. But that is life. We embrace that. It's we all, embrace it's that. It's an ongoing process. Yes, right? exactly. It to be that exactly, way. exactly. Um, the, the school. Um, it's a girls' school. Yes. 
they allow discussion. Um, we should have a hybrid, you know, COVID. Mm -hmm. Instead of just separate from girls and boys. Mm -hmm. I came from boys' friends' school and from Taipei. Right. And there was a, a voting in my school recently. Mm. Um, the school I graduated many years ago. <laughs> and interesting enough, the students did not support the co aid. The students say, let's stay as a boys' school. The same for us. Same. We've been asked many, many times, why don't you turn it into a co-ed school? And we said, no. You see, uh, well, I, I went to the same school. Yes. I went to DGS myself uh -huh. as a young girl. Yeah. Uh, looking back, I think those were the years um, when I felt I could be as free as I had wanted to. Okay. You know, you talk to your girlfriends, uh -huh. you, be, you make good friends, they become your buddies. Yes. And in fact, uh, we just felt that, you know, we, don't ha we are not inhibited by the fact that there is the opposite, se opposite sex there, particularly when you want to do, in the old days, the sciences. Mm -hmm. When girls want to do sciences, they say, hey, this is not for the girls, for the boys only. But the thing is, we didn't feel that kind of limitation. And then uh, what happened is, well, I admit that, even now for myself as headmistress, we try to make up for the so-called the, the, the gap uh, of not living or learning together with the boys that often by bringing in some projects that, you know, we invite the boys to come and uh, we go to them sometimes. Mm -hmm. But that's not that often because we still want to give the girls a unisex uh, uh, environment where they can learn. Yeah. What was your expectation, say, 10 years ago about your students? And what's your expectation today? Are there any differences? Um, two things remain the same. First of all, I just feel that for anyone who has the fortune of having um, a good education or an education, uh, they should become a better person when they come out of it. The second thing is, because you've been so well nurtured, You've been so fortunate to have been given all those learning opportunities. When you become a mature person and when you join the society, uh, you should find every opportunity to share what good things you have with mm -hmm. other people. And I just felt that when you do that, um, don't start thinking that, oh, I'm serving. Actually, once you start to serve, you're being served by those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And these are the two expectations that I will hold very uh, fast and hold very dear to my heart. What do you expect university to continue legacy? So the students uh -huh. need to train. Are we are we making some 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 something you think we should correct? Definitely, because you see, our education did not stop at high school. We all went to no. well, you and you went, I went. Yeah, uh, for me, universities are places where there should be a good balance of teaching and cutting edge research. To me, universities are full of masterminds and I do want to see universities um, do a lot of um, uh, cutting-edge research and also bringing in state-of-the-art infrastructure mm -hmm. to excite everybody yes. because with this state-of-art uh, infrastructure, I'm sure there will be construction of new knowledge. Um, uh, university, I think one of the, 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 the most important reasons for uh, the existence of universities is you must create new knowledge. And we hope with this kind of situation, the students who come will then learn to become independent learning entities. Mm -hmm. And then you know, with that, I think um, the children uh, will become, well, first of all, more knowledgeable. Uh, they will be more uh, ready to meet up to the challenges of new life, impacted especially by technology these days. And of course, two more things that I'd like to see university do is uh, you must keep connecting with top universities from all over the world sure. so that you also expose your students and their local students to these external opportunities. And of course, uh, universities serve a very uh, a practical function. Is really one of, one of the uh, functions is to uh, produce or, or, or train up people who can contribute 
uh, to the workforce in the society. And therefore, if you have connection with these uh, 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 world uh, companies, you know, and give your students uh, opportunities to uh, do some internship there, or to even uh, get some jobs here and there with these people. Uh, so upon graduation, they're already actually people with experience. These are the five things that I would love to see university do even more. 我们今天很高兴能够有机会跟这个巴雀女校的结束校长 德智體群還有我們的美育,我想他們對於人的這個培養希望可以在中學畢業之後在大學在社會有所貢獻,所以巴翠女女校,呃,Diocese Girls High School能夠有這麼成功,實在是有點道理。今天我們有很多東西可以